All right, guys, welcome back to the Comic Again podcast. I'm Shannon. I'm John Wise. And this week, we're finally back to a regular podcast. After, I'm back. After how long has it been, John? Uh, it's February. Well, yeah. um, we probably would have done more had, uh, after the store closed had I not um, got put in the hospital for a few days and then had to deal with um, recuperating and getting used to having, you know, type 2 diabetes and yeah. So. I've been busy working on other projects and as t- well as keeping Comageddon going. And, and trying to find a job. Trying to find a job. That's right. um, John has been helping me with the watching series over on Twisted Zombie Productions uh, YouTube channel. Go check it out. It's pretty cool. Um, I kind of based it around the Halloween series. I, I took a lot of inspiration from... Couldn't uh, tell. From Michael Myers for that ripped suit. Off. It wasn't ripped off. You're right, you're right. He, he's not wearing a brown or blue jumpsuit. He's wearing a bright orange jumpsuit and a mask. I did that to make him more visually... Uh, to be able to see him a lot clearer moving off in the background. Then why can't the victim see him? Because the victim's not facing him. Plus, you know, out in the woods, you expect to see someone in orange because of hunters. I thought they were camo. But they got to wear bright orange, too, so they don't shoot each other. Oh. Yeah. So you kind of expect to see someone in... Oh, that's a Cheney. (laughs) (laughs) So you kind of expect to see someone in orange walking around out in the woods in the middle of nowhere, so... We're in a black skull paintball mask. You can't tell that, though, from a distance. No, you can't. Actually, it's a really cool mask. The series is actually pretty cool. <clears throat> and we're going to begin... I finished the script for the first episode a couple weeks ago. Uh, I got a buddy of mine from school who's going, who's working on the score for the next season. Okay, well, what you need to do next season is get all the episodes filmed and edited first. And then put them out. That way you're not scrambling to get everybody together for each episode. Yeah. And there's like a big gap in between each episode. So this way you can put them out when you want them. They're done. You don't have to worry about it. Like I said, get yourself a terabyte drive. They're not that expensive anymore. You put a lot on there. I, I had the entire movie crypt on there. Music, sound effects, unedited episodes, full edited episodes. All the movies I've used for the series. And I still haven't even scratched the terabyte drive so and um i'm i think i'm planning for six episodes for the for season two uh plus john and i have to work on tales from hell's hollow tales from hell's hollow not tales from the crypt but tales from hell's hollow well there's tales from the dark side as well there is i love that show so yeah, what is what is basically what are you thinking about for this? Series? Tales from Hell's Hollow is going to be an anthology series. It's going to be hosted by the Baron, Baron von Gulstein. Um, and it it's going to be very similar to like Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Dark Side and uh, American Horror Story and stuff like that, uh, where it'll is each episode will be self contained. Okay, so the only thing that really pieces them together is the Baron. Right. Oh, that's good. And then what, uh, do you have like a certain location or a certain spot the Baron's going to use? Or is it just going to kind of be random that matches the movie? Or It's going to be random that matches the movie. That's cool. And <clears throat> we're going to do a little bit more serious depiction of the Baron. Not su- yeah, this is not super serious, but to, to, to differ- darker. To differentiate from the um, uh, the movie crypt, where he's definitely more comical, definitely more family friendly and jokey. Um, I've been working on uh, the change in the Baron's personality for it to match more of a Vincent Price type of character, which is something I kind of came up with whenever John was doing the narration for. Uh, the Hell's Hollow episode of yeah, The it Watching. Was, it was kind of, yeah, 
based on that little narration. Which I thought was I thought turned out really cool. I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Now let's talk about TV series. Supernatural had its two hour season finale this week, this past week. Um, it was actually two separate episodes, which kind of annoyed the hell out of me when I went back and watched it on on demand because I had to do each individual episode. But they're taking the Winchesters back to basics, back to how the first season was. Monster of the Week. Right. Monster of the Week, one big bad, no more demons, though. It's going to be the Antichrist against the Winchesters with, you know, different monsters like vampires, werewolves, and stuff, but no more demons. So they're going by the uh, the Buffy formula. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what Buffy did throughout its entire run, I think, if I remember the show correctly. So, that's um, pretty cool. But and, we, and, of course, they're going to have... I'm not excited for this. I haven't watched Supernatural since um, the episode where the, all the original writers and staff left, which is where the show should have ended. It was a perfect ending. You had the guy... Um, who ended up being, I guess, pretty much the God, writing the story out and finishing it up. And that's where the series should have ended. That was the last time I watched it. So, But there's an episode coming out next season that's going to be fully animated, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Gang. I'm, I'm pretty excited for that, too. Uh, I, mean, I may even be able to get my girlfriend to watch when, it. When I, fir when I first saw that... I was like, that can't be real, you know. I didn't think it was either. And then I was, the more I thought about it, I was like, but it could be a fun episode. At least they're not doing a musical episode. I like the music. Well, it's because Josh Whedon's not directing it. I can't stand serious shows doing musical episodes. Really? You're going to consider Supernatural a serious yes. show? Yes. Yes. Really? It's a drama. It's not a comedy. It's a drama. It's not supernatural glee. It's supernatural. There's just like I didn't like it when Buffy had the musical episode. I didn't like it when the Flash and Supergirl had their musical. I that one. I, I, I gotta catch up on all of the. Uh, all the, the, the way Flash and Supergirl did it was kind of okay. But so was Buffy's. Buffy's their villain caused them to dislike. I mean, of course, Josh Whedon did that episode, too. They basically stole the plot from Buffy. But, for... anyway, Supernatural this season, in the season finale, cat, uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, for those of you who haven't seen it, go ahead and fast forward through this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Castiel got killed by Lucifer, got stabbed by an angel blade. That's it. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Crowley killed himself in order to trap, in order to close the gates of hell permanently. So, he, he kind of, we kind of see it coming in a way, but not really. At first we kind of think that he's just going to permanently join the Winchesters Quit being the king of hell altogether. Because he kind of makes that statement that he's just getting tired of it. He doesn't want to be king anymore. He's tired of having to deal with all the paperwork, all the bullshit and all this. Tired of having demons constantly uh, trying to get to his throne and all that. And then, on top of all that, dealing with Lucifer every other season. He, he's just tired. And then we find out that in order to close the gates of hell, you need... Uh, to have a um, a sacrifice. So he, at first, Dean kind of thinks he's going to sacrifice Dean or Sam. But Crowley ends up sacrificing himself, stabbing himself with the uh, first blade. The first blade? Kane's blade. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. The one that killed Abel, I'm assuming. Right. Oh, okay. And... He does so right in front of Lucifer. And Lucifer is just like, what the... Then he notices says, the uh, dimensional uh, gateway closing that they're in an alternate dimension. And he's like, no! <laughs> and before Lucifer can get at it, it closes and he's just pissed. Him and Mary are trapped in uh, this alternate dimension now. And there's no escape. 
hell is closed permanently. It's kind of hinted that heaven might also be closed permanently. So, like, souls can get into heaven, but they can't get back out. Is so, they're the really going... supposed to be? Huh? Is that the way it's supposed to be? Yeah. Okay. But it's... They're really... Next season, they're really going back to basics. Uh, the show... The series... Uh, the episode ended with the Antichrist being born. It's... It was kind of hinted at during the season that he's supposed to be good, though. He's supposed to be the next coming of Christ type deal. But this is supernatural. It's full of twists and turns. Yeah. So he, I think he's going to be the main baddie for the next season. So what season's next season? Which is 12, I believe. Speculated to be the last. I think it's 12. So it actually lasted longer than Smallville. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Which is funny because it came out, what? Um, it came out third season of Smallville. Somewhere around there. Because Jason Eccles was originally one of the villains yeah. on Smallville. <laughs> who also, at one point, he, he was, uh, he, he auditioned to be Clark Kent. So. He's not tall enough to be Clark Kent. He doesn't, no, he hasn't had, he had the look or nothing. He could be Bruce Wayne, though, if he was a little bit taller. Yeah. yeah. He's got that brooding nature about him. Yeah. Um, but let's see, there's <clears throat> Supergirl, I think, uh, this week, tonight is the season, we're recording this on Monday night. Monday, yeah. Um, I think this is going to be the season finale. Supergirl has to fight Superman, who is being mind-controlled by Daxum's queen, Terry Hatcher. And she also has to fight in, in his, Terry Hatcher in as well. In his defense, she can control me, too, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um... But Cat Grant returned, along with the President of the United States, Linda Carter, Carter, was revealed to be an alien. Really? Yeah. She's a shapeshifter. Is she one of the bad aliens? Or the good no, aliens? she's a good alien. Is she like Martian Manhunter? Or... Um, she's not a Martian, but she is a shapeshifter. Nice. Um, and it appears that she's invincible because... She needs to shapeshift into Wonder Woman. <laughs> It's a DC universe. It could totally happen as an inside joke. Uh, plane crashes and she kind of throws it. But it's revealed that her and Cat Grant were roommates in college. Ooh. Yeah. And Cat <laughs> Grant, when she discovers that uh, oh, the wait. president is an alien, she's like, that would explain why on one of those drunken stone nights I thought I saw a little brown man. In the in the girls' restroom, just tell me one thing: you're still a Democrat, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> and let's see what else. Um, Cat Grant, her and uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy. No, not Jimmy, but uh, the Toy Man's son. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. They are attacked by Daxamites in. Catco's uh, headquarters, and <laughs> Guardian comes in and saves the day. Guardian, and Guardian, Jimmy Olsen, Guardian. Wait, Jimmy Olsen's a fucking Guardian? Yeah, like from the comics. Yeah, gold helmet, the shield. Not gold, silver, but yeah. What? Yeah, Guardian's always had a gold helmet. Well, and a gold shield. This is the CW. What do you expect? Why is Jimmy Olsen a Guardian anyway? Just. Chill. All right. I missed a lot of. He bullshit. he he's been keeping his identity a secret for most of the, se the majority of the season. Oh, it's good. No, it's uh, good for him to know Supergirl's identity, but not well, good for Supergirl know his. She did discover his identity, and he does. They would do work together now. They didn't, but <laughs> she's anyway. Kind of sidekick? Huh? So kind of sidekick? No, technically, Toy Man's uh, son is his sidekick. Is Guardian sidekick because okay, so that was on the right track at one point. Now they're what, what taking lessons from Fox, but it it's kind of cool how they do it anyway. And that's something I missed too, been missing out Gotham. Yeah, I haven't been keeping track of Gotham either, but anyway, Guardian shows up and defeats all the Daxamites in the office and everything. And Cat's like, Thanks, Jimmy. and he, Guardians, he like cocks his head. He's like, no, I'm Guardian. She says, 
No, I can see your eyes. He's like, damn it! <laughs> Which really makes me think that Cat Grant is not buying the whole uh, Kara and Supergirl are two different people thing. She she had it. She had it, and then Ma, Ma, did the yeah. classic shape shifting. Oh, I'm I, I I'm I, I'm the superhero, and that's the person you thought. And the thing is, that. she knows he's a shapeshifter now too. <laughs> so, but. She At some point, one of the one of them need to, needs to accidentally kill Cat Grant. She knows too much. <laughs> See, I, the thing is, Cat Grant's actually becoming a really cool character in the show. Yeah, she was pretty damn annoying in the first season. Yeah, but now she's a, she's kind of like this mother figure for Kara, and kind of almost like a mother figure for everyone, all the characters who worked for her. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> so what, what else we have? We got, uh, the Flash. Has anybody even kept what well, we know, you know about the Flash? It's, it, it needs to either pick up or die. From what I've been reading. What about Green Arrow? Did that, that manage to pick up? Did, um, did that get any better after that horrible... Uh, they are... Season? This was supposed to be a better season, was it? Kind of. Like I said, I, I'm waiting... They did introduce Natalia Al Ghul. Natalia. Yeah, Natalia. Okay. Um. And they introduced Prometheus. Did they, did they do her right. Yeah, I'd say so. Is she hot? Yeah. Okay, that's the only thing that matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, Prometheus was. Uh, well, I don't want to tell you since you haven't watched. The yeah, because you already freaking told me all everything else. Might as well tell me who the hell Prometheus. Is. No, I can't. I can't ruin it for you. Who is Prometheus? No, I can't ruin it for you because it'll spoil the entire season. The season's already been spoiled. <laughs> so, no, just go, who is, who is Prometheus? Uh, the district attorney. Who, during this season, became really good friends with Oliver. He knew Oliver's secret and convinced Oliver that he actually enjoyed killing. That he was a serial killer and not just a vigilante. Was that the, was that the one that was dating his sister? Mm -hmm. The district attorney? Who the hell is it? When, when, Al, when Oliver so. was running for mayor, she was dating some dude who was working with No, him. no, this guy is married. <laughs> but he's the same age as Oliver. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> wow. So, um, I think that takes care of the TV shows that we're yeah, caught up on. Yeah, I think we went over full. We briefly went over full. Legends of Tomorrow. Ended. Oh, yeah, how was that? It's all right. It's going good this season. Yeah, uh, um, it ended a few weeks back. Uh, like I said, I I I've been I got so far behind. I said I basically said screw it. I'll wait till all of them are done. And like the only the only series I'm caught up on um, is Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> and I do like how the Flash managed to bring back Captain Cold for last week's episode. How did they do that? I was curious. Um, the Flash ran back in time and. Uh, got him uh, basically during last season of Legends of Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. It was a, a complete total dick. Right. Um, because the last time we saw Captain Cold, he was actually a villain working with the Legion of Doom yeah, in they, Legends of Tomorrow. Because they grabbed the bad version out of time. Uh, right. <laughs> it's one thing about <sighs> comics. You never <laughs> have a lack of time travel. No. <laughs> I, I hate that because I always use it as a scapegoat. Well, if we fuck something up, we can just, you know, yeah. go back in time and say it was time travel. Because they did that recently. Well, that's... Spo spoiler alert. They recently did that with Captain America. Because in the comics, um, from what I've been reading online, is Captain America, in case you're not familiar with what's been going on, is um, and the, Red, the Red Skull uh, mind-fucked um, Steve Rogers to make him think that he was a Hydra sleeper agent. Um... Well, Steve Rogers confronted Red Skull and was about to kill him. Red Skull was about to tell him that he's not really Hydra, that he, he mind messed him up, but he didn't get a chance to because Steve killed him. So Steve Rogers, Captain America, still thinks he's a Hydra sleeper agent. Apparently in the last uh, last comic, or the most recent comic, um, a new Steve Rogers, supposedly the real Steve Rogers, came out of some type of a fucking time warp with a beard. And uh, says I'm home or I'm back or something like that. 
So now we have a, apparently a fake Steve Rogers and a real Steve Rogers. One's Captain America. One's Captain Hydra. <laughs> Captain um, Hydra. I think that's what the hell they're calling him. <laughs> um, so Marvel's just fucking. There is one thing Marvel's going to be doing though that I am excited about. After this whole Secret Empire shit, they're going to back off the massive comic story arcs for about a year, year and a half. They so, need to. I... Because it's so damn con- convoluted. It's so messed up. Um, I personally miss the days when you can pick up a comic book and you you, you either get... And like like a storyline used to be only be like three issues. If, if that, you know. Yeah. Six issues, maybe. And it would be like for each individual character. Like Spider-Man would have like the Return of the Sinister Six. Or our Carnage Attack. It'd be like three issues. And then after that, there'd be ramifications, but it'd go on to the next storyline. That may take place in just one issue. You know, I I miss those days. Right. Because now if you want a certain storyline, you have to pick up books you don't even care about or have never read. Uh, You have to pick up Spider-Man, Captain America, um, The Runaways, The... Uh, Defenders, Doctor Strange, She-Hulk, Avengers, uh, Avengers side issue or uh, titles one through B, uh, <laughs> Deadpool. I mean issues you've never even cared about. Like if you, like if you only if you only like Spider-Man comics, you should be able to get the whole storyline through Spider-Man comic. Right. If you want it, like like Secret Wars, Secret Wars. But see one thing did I... an entire series of just Secret Wars storyline, and but. You were able to read the other the characters that were in Secret Wars. You were able to read their titles with hints of what was going on in Secret Wars. But it see, didn't interfere with their story. The thing is, though, like, back in the 90s when they did that with the characters, like, Spider-Man had, like, three or four different titles. Amazing Spider-Man sensation. And they still managed to keep the storyline separate in each title. Not, not towards the, the time, later 90s. Well, towards the later 90s when everything started to get screwed up. Yeah. That's where you started to get um, Age of Apocalypse. That's where you started to get the death of Superman. And they all started to inter- uh, include all the other titles that they had. So that that's why I, I blame the later 90s for that crap. And don't get me wrong, some of those storylines are really good. And some of them made use of the way they do things. And the storylines were really well, really well done. Blackest Night hmm. did an amazing job yeah. at, at bringing in all the titles for that one storyline. And but when, it wasn't when they, needed. Right, and when they did, like, the individual heroes, like, Titans or Batman, Blackest Night, or Wonder Woman, it was uh, three issues, right? And, and it, it was... Two or three issues. And it would say one of three, two of three. <laughs> it didn't hold with the rest of the title. Right. And, and that main storyline of the DC Universe, um, like, you, you were able to pick up a Wonder Woman... And say, okay, well, she's having a storyline, but this is happening along with it. That's being caused from... The, it didn't interfere. Marvel has not been able to do that. Right. Uh, so they, they go, well, Civil War. Everybody's... And that, that that made sense, though. I'll say that. It did make sense. But again, uh, you weren't really able to pick up, say, a Spider-Man book and have his own adventures without it... See, that's when I started getting out of Marvel was with Civil War because... They expected you to pick up every single title. Just to get this whole storyline. Right. Yeah, I don't agree with that. So now, uh, kudos to Marvel, though, for actually um, stopping stopping that, at least for a while. I may actually be able to start catching up. <laughs> I tell you, now, though, my new favorite publisher is IDW. IDW, yeah. IDW is doing amazing work. They, you got Ghostbusters, you got Star Trek, you got Ninja Turtles. I, you, They're doing amazing... I just finished... Star Trek Q Gambit, which came back came from I think 2014, somewhere around there, and they just came out with Broken Mirror. I saw that it's the next generation version right. of Broken Mirror. Right, and that's really good. I don't really care for the art style in it, but it does. Ma- Jean Luc Picard does look like Patrick Stewart with a beard. Yeah, I mean, a little goatee. No, he has a beard. Oh, does he have yeah. a full beard? Yeah, he, he it's a thin line. Thin beer was very right. good. To, okay. Right. And then they got the writing for each of those for Star Trek and for Ghostbusters. You can tell these are written by fans because they capture the essence of the characters. 
Peter Venkman in Ghostbusters is like Peter Venkman from the movies. Um, I do want to read that crossover, though. The original and then the new movie one. Where, what is that called? 101? Ghostbusters Get Real. Oh, no, no. Yeah, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters Get 101. Real was the one where they crossed over the real Ghostbusters right. cartoon. Which Go- is I've been I've actually been reviewing the Ghostbusters 101 on Comic Yeah, that's why I haven't watched it. I want to read it and <laughs> get spoiled. Um, but anyway, like I said, they I just finished uh, the six issue story arc of Star Trek Q Gam uh, yeah Q Gambit, which has it starts out as a next generation story for a few uh, pages. Where uh, Q visits Jean-Luc Picard. And Q is trying to tell him that, you know, Spock didn't disappear. He went to another reality. He created this whole new un- universe. The movie verse. Right. Nice. And so both universes the are... New, the newer movie verse. Right. Are coexisting. Oh. This is what ID does. And it makes sense the way they do it. It, they Spock didn't delete this the next generation universe. It, they're coexisting side by they're side. Two alternate realities. Right now, did you ever read Star Trek mm. Countdown? I'm getting ready to. It, that, not not it, Countdown to Darkness. But count, no. That was the Countdown was the prequel uh, storyline to the remake. Of Star I'm Trek. I'm getting movie. ready to. I've got issue number one on my Comicsology downloaded onto my phone. I need you to get the other issues. I haven't started reading it I, yet. I, I, so. Guys, I gotta just let you borrow my copy, but it, it's pretty good. Uh, they tie in the next gen, and that movie works really well. But in Q Gambit, I keep wanting to call it Q's Gambit, but it's actually Q Gambit, which doesn't really sound as good. It doesn't but, make sense. Yeah. But it also brings in. It has the uh, Kelvin verse uh, Enterprise crew team up with the Deep Space Nine crew in an alternate in that alternate future who aren't actually the Deep Space Nine crew. They're still their own same personalities. Uh, ben Sisko is Ben Sisko. They're just they aren't Starfleet anymore. They never were because the Klingons conquered Earth. When uh, after the uh, Dominion conquered the Alpha Quadrant. Okay. So it. How do you keep doing that? Lit. So it doesn't. Oh, will it stop if it's not lit? No, but I I like to see just to make sure that we don't keep talking. I got you. For those of you who are wondering, we're recording this on my phone. I keep. John keeps seeing me pressing the. uh, tapping on the screen (laughs) to keep it lit up. I didn't think to change it to a 10 minute uh, backlight uh, before we started this. I like to keep an eye on the sound waves, keep an eye on the timer, see how long we're going for, make sure it continues to record us. Yeah. So. Okay. But the way they end Q Gambit, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but I didn't really see it coming until uh, the last few pages, like until right before they actually did it. So... It, it's basically... Now, are these uh, physical copies you have? Or? No, I, it's Comixology. It's digital download. Comixology. Yeah. Does this cost? Not to create an account. And they have tons of free comics on there, too. Oh, but these are the comics you're actually buying. Right. Okay. And it's a lot cheaper than buying the physical copy. Because, like, these Star Trek ones are $1.99. Um, Maybe it's price. But, <laughs> cute, yeah. Q comes to the uh, Kelvin vs. Uh, Enterprise crew, particularly Kirk, because Q finds himself face-to-face with his own no-win scenario. And he goes to Kirk because Kirk is notorious for... The no-win scenario. Right. And Which Kirk? The Kelvin vs. Kirk. Shatner, or, uh, Shatner Kirk? No, Kelvin vs. Kirk. The new Kirk. Oh. Yeah. How's that Kelvin vs.? It's Kelvin vs. How is it Kelvin? That's just what they call it. I think the original one would be the Kelvin verse. No. So he he talked to Chris Pine. Right. And <laughs> what it is is the Dominion has uh, one of the um, I forget what the uh, 
demonic creatures in Deep Space Nine are. That you got the prophets, and then you got their counterparts. The uh... anyway, Gold Ducat is uh, takes on one of those beings and becomes extremely powerful. And those beings have destroyed, wiped out the prophets all but one, and have taken over the wormhole. And Dukat is so strong, mind, uh, strong willed that he actually uh, enslaves the being rather than the being enslaving him. And he goes in. They go into the wormhole, set to release all the others, and there's only one prophet left. And so Q is faced with his own no-win scenario because if if Kirk goes into the uh, wormhole. Him and his crew are going to be destroyed, and the uh, what are they called? Um, Paul Race will be released on the universe anyway, wiping out all extra dimensional beings, in Q, including the Q continuum. Mm. That's how powerful they are. Wow! But if Kirk sits and waits for them to come out and attacks, then they'll be wiped out anyway, and so it's the whole no win scenario thing and the way they figure out how to spock is actually the one when he becomes possessed by the prophet spock because ben cisco got possessed by the prophet and then uh gold to got kills him and he passes on the prophet to spock instantly spock realizes what he has to do i'm not going to give it away should have used a condom <laughs> but it, Spock is the one who realizes how to defeat the Paw Rays and all this. And it, it's just, wow. it's an amazing story. I can't say enough good things about it. And here next week, we, I'm making the announcement right now because I did get confirmation from them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. What day? Jo uh, it'll be either the 30th or 31st. Okay, hopefully the 30th. John and I are going to be review or interviewing Dapper Dan Sconing from IDW Publishing, who draw does the artwork for the Ghostbusters comic books currently, and he's even talking to Aaron Bur er Eric Burnham, seeing if he's going to. Uh, I think he did the artwork yeah. for the Ghostbusters the board game. Over I believe there. so. Yeah. Very, very animated. Like, yeah. yeah. But Eric Burnham is the writer for Ghostbusters. And Dapper Dan asked me if he, if I wanted him to ask Eric to join him on the interview, too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Surprise. I, that's something I didn't even know. So, <laughs> cool. Um, I'm going to message him probably uh, this weekend. Get everything in order and all that. Find out the exact day. We're going to Skype him. So, I mean. Uh, they'll probably be at your place then. Yeah. I don't have internet. <laughs> right. But I, when I asked him if... He, so we don't have an exact day or time yet, though. Right. Okay. It will be like 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening, though. Oh, okay. Those. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But it really surprised me whenever I sent him the... Because he'd been sharing my Ghostbuster reviews. Right. Uh, for Comageddon on Twitter. And... Uh, I asked him if he'd be willing to let us interview him, and he said, yeah, but we'd have to wait until probably the end of May, right? because the end of the month is when he's not quite so busy, and uh, so I was really surprised. This will be our first professional, professional industry interview. Celebrity interview, yeah. yeah. So, we really got to do good on this one. and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then um, Shannon just informed me, um, I guess Billy was supposed to tell me and didn't, um, that um, for $25 per person? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, for Comageddon, we can get into C2E2 next year as press, and we can actually get behind the scenes, do interviews and stuff like that. So, that's something I'm kind of excited about, because I haven't gone to C2E2 yet. I wish I could have gone this year, because Stan Lee was there. Uh, I'm hoping he's going to be alive and there next year. <laughs> Um, I would be, I'm going to Wizard World this year, uh, for, uh, Fred's bachelor party. He's going to have his bachelor party at Wizard World. Nice. 
Uh, so Cindy and I, I, Cindy told me we have to go, and I'm like, okay, if we have to. <laughs> um, right now, there's nobody going to be there. Is the, is the bad thing. I think right now we got um, uh, we got Kaylee from Firefly. We've got Dean Kane. We've got Kevin Sorbo. Um, uh, John Cusack's going to be there. <laughs> like, what the hell is he doing to it at a comic book convention? Um, well, he was part of the Brat Pack, though, wasn't he? No. I don't think he was. I, I thought he was, because... Um, he, it's still, it's a comic book convention, and he hasn't... Yeah, but that's still... Well, it, maybe it's... he's going to be there, too. And maybe they're going to announce that he's going to be part of... Possibly. So. Um, but not a very big list right now, which surprises me, because Wizard World Chicago is, it was supposed to be the second largest comic convention next to San Diego. It's the whole reason Wizard Magazine closed down, so they could focus on conventions. On the conventions... Um, and they even, cl- like last year, I went to my friend's, uh, another friend's wedding in St. Louis at the time, Wizard World St. Louis was the same weekend, so I totally missed St. Louis Wizard World, and apparently that was the last St. Louis Wizard World, they're not doing them more, like they've cut down a lot of the Wizard Worlds that they're doing, so, but they're still going to do the one in Chicago, I'm supposed to be there, um, I brought this up because I'm hoping that it's announced that Stanley will be there, and... <laughs> My girlfriend thinks spending three hundred dollars to meet Stanley and that is nuts. I, I agree, but it's a once in a lifetime thing, and I'll definitely you know even if I don't get to see anybody else that I probably want to see, I'll I'll, I'll sacrifice and go see Stanley. Um, <laughs> but I don't think I'm trying to think who else. I think James Obar is going to be there. Who? James Obar. He was the uh, writer, creator, artist for the creator of the Crow. Okay. Uh, I met him once. Uh, he was at a convention. I didn't know he was going to be there. Otherwise, I would have brought my girl graphic novel with uh, Adam Sign. But he did have another comic book there. He did. Uh, did I Adam Sign? So. But another comic book publisher that's doing amazing things right now as well would be Dynamite Publishing. Dynamite, Sensor. What happened? Some, Some spam phone call. Phone call. Oh. Go away. Miss but, Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, Dynamite. Dynamite is doing pretty decent there too. Uh, the Shadow now is an amazing story. It takes it's the Shadow, but in today's world. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, during his studies and everything in Tibet, wasn't it Tibet? Yeah, I think it was Tibet. He discovered a way to slow his aging, so he still looks the same as he did back in the 30s and 40s. Oh, nice. Right. So it's the same guy. It's still... Yeah. Is it Lamont Cranston? Yes. It is Lamont Cranston. But the world sees him as the original Lamont Cranston's great-grandson. Right. Because yeah. he's obviously... Well, you look a lot like your... No, I'm the same guy. What does, <laughs> Katie? Um, but... Really? Hey, be lucky. I'm not the kind of ass to put the mic down there. And... Normally I would um, For those of you who don't know, who couldn't hear, John just farted. Doesn't start to smell yet. <laughs> don't get up, and please. My stomach feels better. <laughs> um, so no, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, dynamite. Uh, Dynamite's been doing a lot of cool things. Um, and they've got this other. Uh, uh, Spawn is celebrating his anniversary this year. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, starting to smell. Uh, <laughs> Um, I had, I've recently had Tab McFarlane on my Facebook. I thought he was already on there. I guess I was wrong. But he, they've been doing, uh, like, anniversary giveaways and stuff like nice. that. So, uh, 25 years. Wow. Of Spawn. That makes me feel old. I, yeah. Um. But Dynamite has, they have another, uh, t- publishing title as well. It's called, it's called King. I thought it was Boom. Oh, that's separate. No. They separate? No, boom, boom is something different. But Dynamite has King, which has all the King features comic book characters like Flash Gordon, the Phantom, uh, Mandrake right. the Magician, right. Jungle Jim, and so they're doing this whole King, uh, King's Quest and King's Wash thing. Nice. And they, it's. King the Phantom, King Mandrake the Magician, King Jungle Jim, and they're all intertwined. 
And for King's Quest and King's Watch, those characters team up to save the world. Nice. And we got, uh, for King's Watch, they saved Earth from, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Other Defenders of Earth. <laughs> yeah, the, it was pretty much because it was these same characters except no none of their kids. Yeah, it was their kids were with them, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, For those not know, Defenders of the Earth was an 80s cartoon series that featured these characters, the Phantom, Mandrake the Magician, Flash Gordon, the Phantom. You said the Phantom. The Phantom. Yeah, there was one Phantom. You said the Phantom and then you said the Phantom again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, but in this, uh, Mandrake the Magician's uh, kind of sidekick partner, the strongest man in the world. Oh, yeah. I, I forget his name. Just but Ubu. he takes up the mantle of the Phantom because the uh, the actual Phantom died during King's Watch. Uh -huh. And so this new Phantom has to find the the dis the last descendant of the true phantom to take up the mantle and it's a girl and they're both the phantom now oh. and it's a really cool story i'm i'm currently working on king mandrake the magician i'm on issue three there are four issue story arcs after this i'm going to move on to uh king jungle jim and then king flash gordon and then i'm going to finish uh continue reading king's quest very cool yeah. so if you guys if you guys are only stick with the main publishers like dc marvel, marvel DC, image, image yeah or Val and valiant you're missing out because there are say, some i would say valiant's really a main one i'd be granted they've been around a while but... valiant is becoming the third universe is it again yeah yeah um but you guys, you guys are really missing out. I, I see all these other comic book channels uh, on YouTube. Got Comic Score and Comic Story and uh, Comics Explained, Nerd Sync, all these others that they only, only focus. Marvel and DC. <coughs> Marvel, DC, Valiant, and Image is what they do. None of them really focus on the uh, independent titles. Like Dynamite. Right. Or, uh, yeah, dude. Or, no. Now, who has the uh, Transformers G.I. Joe's? Dynamite is a guy, is it Boom? I think it's Boom. Because so I think they also, uh, Dynamite has Vampirella. Or do they not still no. have Vampirella? No, they have uh, Red Sonja. Red Sonja? Yeah. Now, who, well, who has Vampirella now? I'm not sure. I, I, think they, I think they also have Vampirella. I was thinking that was Devil's Due publishing. They did, but they, no, that was due to that. I remember at one point they did a crossover between uh, Red Sonia, Vampirella, and there's another female uh, character. So there, there we go. There's <laughs> an answer to your question. I don't know if it exists, but if it does, my my holy grail if they have one it would be a Vampirella Funko Pop. There you go. I kind of hope. For those curious, uh, we did a Funko Pop review. Shannon asked me uh, out of all my out of Funko Pops ever made, what's my holy grail? I tell them I don't really have one because I kind of get like the characters. I only get the characters I want, and so you know it's hard to decide decide you know what my holy grail would be. But yeah, if they made a Vampirella one. That would be. I did find a Red Sonia one. If I, I tell you, two I want Funko to make would be the Shadow. That would be cool. I and the sure. Rocketeer. They have Rocketeer. They do. They do. Good luck finding them. And he's pricey as hell. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that because somebody on Facebook was selling all their Funko Pops, and one of them was the Rocketeer, but didn't have the box. He They had the plastic that he, there in the, in, in the box, but they didn't have the box. Oh. Um, I would have got him. Because yeah. I've got the fan, I've got the purple I want the fan. Movie. Huh? I want the movie. What movie? The Rocketeer. Oh. I can't find the movie. I know they released it on Blu ray a couple years ago. I can't find it. I, I think they got it on. They didn't find it online. I think they got it on Netflix. I, I, I think. want a physical copy. Oh. <laughs> um, I think that might have to do it for our show this week, the podcast. My voice is starting to strain a little bit. I'm not used to talking so much anymore. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> no, no, I don't. That's all I'm doing, son. He was talking about you. That's fine. He said Shannon. 
But we will be back. John's going to do a toy review. Masters of the Universe Classics. Which ones are you going to do, John? Um, I'm going to bring down Scareblow, uh, Battle Armor Skeletor, and Battle Armor He-Man. Nice. This podcast is going to be released, let's see, Tuesdays are pop reviews. This will be released on Wednesday. And we'll do we'll have the toy review toy up review on Thursday. Thursday. There you go. Toy review Thursdays. I don't know if that's something you have to do, but it should be. It was back when uh, we were filming regularly. Well, uh, if you, I'm open for Tuesday. Tuesdays are normally my mowing days. Uh, my day is full on Tuesdays. Well, forget we can do Mondays as long as it's like before four thirty. And if I can get done with my rounds by, like, you know, one, <laughs> okay. two. So, so uh, that's it for this week's podcast. I, I think I want to start a topic for next week, though. What's that? Saturday morning cartoons. Yes. There's one I've been wanting to talk about for a while. It was, a, it was a special. It was the... Uh, Saturday morning cartoon, uh, Saturday morning superstars to I the rescue. I knew you were going to say that one. It I was on every channel. It was simulcast. It was on every channel. It was ABC. No, it was on it was on ABC, Fox, uh, CBS. And then it was because they only used ABC characters. They had they had Ninja Turtles. And they but had Al, it, it was a part. Of, uh, it, they didn't just use ABC characters. They had the Ninja Turtles too. That was which, ABC. That was Fox. No. Ninja Turtles was on Fox. Which is, are you talking about the eighties Ninja yes. Turtles? Yes. No. No, actually, they weren't ABC. They were CBS. That's right. They were CBS. But the, it was simulcast on every channel. I don't remember that, that part. Maybe yeah. I only watched that one channel. <laughs> <laughs> but all at the same time too, because they had a special intro uh, from George Bush and Barbara Bush. I remember that. I remember Michelangelo being the only turtle that showed up though. Yeah. He was only in Zone. Well, Slimer was the only one from the Ghostbusters. And that was ABC. Yeah. And yeah. I think uh, Alvin was the only one of the chipmunks. Alvin, yeah. Um, it had Garfield and... Uh, were the Muppet Babies? I want to say the Muppet Yeah, Babies. it did have the Muppet Babies. I don't remember which one. But it had okay. Kermit and Piggy. Okay. It, it had, they had all... some. They had some basketball cartoon guys on there, too. They, like, did they have the animated... Like the super pros on there? Or? No, it did not have. Oh, uh, was that that was? <clears throat> no, I, I want to say it did something like that with them but, too. We'll save that for the next podcast. Yeah, we'll just... we're going on for almost fifty minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is starting to go. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, and he's been drinking. So. <laughs> like liquid. Yeah, like, like my usual body armor, which is awesome stuff, but it gives you the shits. It keeps you regular because it's made with real fruit. Uh, yeah. So I can't drink uh, good fruit juice. Mm. Uh, check, a look, check out the ingredients. Yeah, let me check out the ingredients here. So, uh, yeah. Tune in Thursday for John's Toy Reviews. Yeah. Take care, guys. Okay.